Hello everyone, it's Not a Noob Pat, and welcome to Perk Review. Today we're taking a look at the level 40 hag perk, Hex Devour Hope. This perk works based on a token system. If a survivor is unhooked when you are at least 24 meters away, you will gain a token as long as the hex is still standing. For two tokens, you receive a 5% haste status effect for 10 seconds after you hook a survivor. This is helpful so you can get 24 meters away, and even more helpful if you pair it with barbecue and chili and want to rush to other survivors. After three tokens, all survivors suffer from the exposed status, meaning you can immediately hit them into the dying state. After five tokens, you can kill all survivors by hand. Essentially, this perk acts as a mori at five tokens. The negatives are fairly obvious. If you get a bad totem spot and the hex is destroyed the first minute of the game, well, you're out of luck. While I think it is beneficial that this perk doesn't encourage you to camp the hook as you have to be 24 meters away, it does kind of encourage you to camp your hex because you don't want it to fail so you can get up to 5 tokens. So this perk definitely changes how you will play as a killer. Let's get into our demonstration. Here I hook a survivor and back up 24 meters so I gain the ability to get a token. Again, benefits begin at 2 tokens. This is a demonstration of how far away 24 meters is. You can tell whether or not you will gain a token by the perk icon in the bottom right corner. If the icon is lit up, you are far enough away. If it is dull, you are within 24 meters of the hook survivor or the hex has been destroyed. After receiving two tokens, you will receive a haste bonus after the next hook. You can see here that there will be a mini Devour Hope icon next to the perk section in the bottom right after you hook a survivor with two tokens. This indicates that the haste status effect is active and it will disappear after 10 seconds. Then, after three tokens, all survivors suffer from the exposed status, meaning you can instantly put them into the dying state with one hit. From the survivor side, when they are hit into the dying state, they will receive a notification that Devour Hope is the reason they are exposed. This generally leads to the survivors frantically trying to find the hex. Then finally, after 5 tokens, you can kill a survivor by hand. I know this may be pretty tough to understand still, but I think our examples will help. Let's get into our examples. For this first example, I'm playing Hillbilly. Now, almost every game I use this perk, I immediately rush over to see if my hex has good placement or not. Unfortunately in this game, my hex has terrible placement. If I end up chasing anyone around the killer shack that has a generator inside, they're going to find my lit totem, so I have to consistently patrol it, as you're going to see that I do multiple times during this game. This is to make sure that no survivors find it and eliminate it. Survivors may also catch on to where your hex is if you keep patrolling the same area over and over again, so keep this in mind as well. What killer you also play while using this perk is important. This is because you want to be able to get back to your hex quickly and make sure no one is on it, and you want to be able to get 24 meters away from the hook as quickly as possible so you can earn a token. Another benefit that I like about this perk is, if they can't find your hex and want to prevent tokens, they're going to have to save when you're within 24 meters. This typically means you can walk right back to the unhook area and hit a survivor down in the dying state again fairly easy. Now this Claudette clip is awesome because I just got done hooking Jane and then I'm able to run over to Claudette. However, the unhook comes in and gives me my third token right before I swing at Claudette. Since there are now three tokens, every survivor suffers from the exposed status, meaning I can immediately hit Claudette down into the dying state. Again, after the survivors figure out that they are exposed, the search for the Devour Hope Hex really heats up as they want to deactivate it to keep from being morried or being exposed the entire rest of the game. Furthermore, I begin to freeze up a bit because I know I'm only one or two tokens away from mooring every survivor and I really want to make sure I don't lose the hex now. Anyways, because I get another hook and find Jane with my fifth token, I'm ready to rock. She spins around because she knows it's over and I'm able to hit her down and moor her. Unfortunately for me, all the generators have been powered and the survivors are headed for the exit gates. However, the same thing's about to happen to Claudette. She is healed up, but she's still exposed, so I can down her and moor her as well. Then, here's a reminder if you needed it. Don't be dumb, just leave. 
It's toxic if you teabag at the door, and you might end up being morried, especially if the killer is using Hex Devour Hope. Three morried, one died on hook. I would say that's a successful game for Hex Devour Hope. Now, for this next example, I'm playing Huntress. This is not an ideal killer for the Hex, as I can't defend it particularly well. She is somewhat slow, and I can't get around the map too quickly to check on my Hex. However, I get great Hex placement, and you'll see why later. I'm running through this game very quickly, but Devour Hope was the only way I was going to do well. I was facing high ranked survivors who were smacking me. I didn't even get my first hook until they had two generators done. Then I only had two hooks by the time they had three generators done. Also check out this ridiculous hatchet throw here. Again, I know I'm done if Devour Hope gets undone. The only way I'm going to win this game is if the survivors are exposed, so I do start guarding my Hex quite heavily, and thank goodness I do as well. Because it appears this survivor was over here on this side of the map trying to find it, and they were pretty close. Furthermore, I'm able to get this Meg Thomas with the instant hit, meaning I hit two healed survivors down immediately due to the exposed status effect, so you can see how helpful Devour Hope is there. Now, I can see that the other people are unhooked on the other side of the map, and I immediately know where the survivors are going. They probably located the Hex, so I've run over to that general area. Another nice part of this perk is that survivors will focus on your Hex. So as long as you stick close to that area, you will probably be able to stay close and knock them down, because they're going to be gunning to break that Hex. But, I'm up to 5 tokens, so I can start killing people by hand. And, as you can see, I do. So let's take a look at the map and see why survivors are in trouble. The hatch, my hex, and the remaining three generators are in a small area on this side of the map. I get extremely lucky in this regard. Again, I'm able to patrol all areas of the map that I need to right now. Unless I were to play extremely poorly, there is no way the survivors are going to be able to get out. The survivors are all exposed. They know I can mori them, so they're playing timidly. I'm going to get this lucky hatchet throw in here again, and then I'm able to eventually find Meg and put her into the dying state down with the other survivor. Since I know where the hatch is, I go back to kill the original survivor by hand who is closest to the hatch, then I return to Meg to finish her off. This is a great example of what getting a good hex placement will do for you, and a game where I probably wouldn't have won if I didn't have this perk because I couldn't have killed survivors by hand, and they wouldn't have been exposed which means I would have had to hit them twice instead of once. So, let's give it a grade. I give Devour Hope a 7 out of 10. I really enjoy Devour Hope, and you may think this grade is a little low because of the examples you just saw. However, you have to be lucky for this perk to work. You have to first get good hex placement at the beginning of the game, then you have to be able to stay near your hex without survivors completing 5 generators around the map. For my rule of thumb, if you get 3-5 to five stacks and can mori survivors or hit them down when they are in the exposed status, it is worth using this perk in a game. If this hex is eliminated before then, the perk really isn't worth using that game. Out of about 20 games, I only reached 3 stacks about 8 times. This is mostly because of really bad hex placement. This is obviously the main issue with all hexes. Some maps have better totem spots than others. If you want to check out how to guard your hex totems more efficiently, make sure to check out the Hex Thrill of the Hunt perk review I posted a while back. Link is in the description below. Finally, after the exposed status is revealed, when you get 3 tokens, survivors start frantically looking around for the hex as they don't want to continue to be exposed, and they don't want to eventually get morried. Again, this can be helpful because you can knock down survivors who are gunning for your hex totem, or this can be bad because while you are more inclined to camp your hex, they may ignore it and do generators far, far away from it. This perk does change how you play, and this perk does take a bit of getting used to, so I don't think giving it a grade above 7 would be any fair. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave it a like. If you want to watch more perk reviews, there are links in the description. I guarantee other perks aren't this complicated. Then, make sure to visit my channel and subscribe. Take it easy.